Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, my fellow YouTubers, Facebookians, um, subscribers. This is going to probably be the wrap-up of Gun Restrictions Part 7. Now, I've told you you can't ban high-capacity magazines because it's unconstitutional. You can't ban uh, AR-15s because it's unconstitutional. In my opinion, it's part of the Second Amendment. You can't ban me from saying this stuff. It's unconstitutional. That's the First Rights Amendment. Now, you can't go into a weapons raid because that's unconstitutional under the Fourth Amendment. And you can't let the states delegate to go and do weapons raids. That's under the Constitutional Amendment of State, uh, of Number Four. And the states can't dictate power to remove them from you because, well, it's your Second Rights Amendment. The government can't do executive orders to do that. What they can do is tighten gun laws. Yeah. To do that, they must already enforce the 20,000 laws on the books. Now, they can try to get through legislation. Oh, yes, we need to do this, this, and this. Well, you can, but you can't. You see, it depends on um, certain issues, you know, like um, what, is going, uh, what is going on. Well, like I said, you can ban these, you can ban those. It doesn't matter. The thing is, it's unconstitutional. The NRA is going to let Congress decide the fate of firearms. The president can only enforce certain, certain laws. He can't use an executive order, I do not think, to close gun show loopholes. I, of course, think, you know, gun show loopholes, in my opinion, should be closed because, frankly, no one needs to go to a gun show and buy a gun that day. Background checks, yes. Background check system is fine. They shouldn't be. They should do a background check in everyone purchasing. Criminals are alike. I mean, when you fill out forms, you gotta say, "Oh, have you been mentally educated?" No. Have you been? Are you purchasing this for someone else? You know all this stuff. You gotta remember, straw purchases are illegal. Look at the New York guy. He murdered two or and wounded two, so four people. Fire department when he was using a weapon. That was in the name of, I believe, a 24 to 26 year old female. Bottom line is, when you buy a gun, you should have your ammo in one box, your gun in a safe, and you should always know how to access that safe. You shouldn't go ahead and say, oh, well, I'm just going to leave it in my purse or on my side or whatever. A little kid, you know, might get enthused and be like, you know, finding it somewhere one day if you leave it around and say, look, I got this gun that looks realistic. Then he pops the trigger off. Then he cries because little Timmy got shot because daddy or mommy left their gun around. That's wrong. Lock it up if you have kids. Lock it up when you're at home. Uh, if you go out somewhere and you can't take your gun with you and you don't have a permit, lock it up. Put it in a safe. Now, a lot of people say, oh, well, what's your opinion on these magazines? Well, a lot of companies like Kimber, if they're making eight rounds or more, they'll just leave the state of New York like Yonkers and go to New Jersey to like Hoboken or somewhere to keep manufacturing until New Jersey says, oh, well, we're going to follow in New York's footsteps. We're going to do seven rounds. Then they'll package up the factory again and move it again, charging more money for their firearms because they had to move their factory to say, uh, Utah, where they can get tax breaks or, or whatever, you know. It just, you know, you're going to drive the gun makers out of your state just to say, well, you can't have that assault weapon because we said so. Well, there's a lot of weapons out there, 10 million plus, that are uncirculating, or not, uh, they're circulating, I mean, not uncirculating, not, uh, you know, circulating, and... And there's like maybe 20, 30 million clips for them. You can't just sit there and say, oh, we're banning this because of it. No, you can't do the grandfather clause because, frankly, the average Joe is not going to turn in their handgun or weapon if you got it restricted to 10 rounds or less like Feinstein or the New York Jack Wagons that are saying 7 rounds or less. Come on, they're not going to hand them over. They might just pack up and leave the state and say the hell with it. Unless you declare martial law in that state, then it's unconstitutional. Yet again. You see what I'm saying? So technically, all I can say is, don't worry. The NRA, the other gun associations, they got your back. Eventually something will happen in the second term of the presidency. 
where Congress and the Senate's going to have to sit down and discuss this thoroughly and re reasonably. Right now, it's all about the fiscal cliff. Let them worry about the fiscal cliff. Don't worry about firearms. Even if they got proper legislation to do it, it doesn't matter. They can't just do it. I mean, there's 300 million guns in circulation, and frankly, there's not much you can do about it. The average people that are sane will get them, will keep them locked up, will protect themselves, and will use them only when they have to. Otherwise, they won't use it because a lot of people are afraid of the repercussions. They got it for self-defense. They know how to use them. They'll handle it, but the aftermath, well, we don't know how well they handle that. Bottom line is, and in the wrap-up of this video, is you cannot ban semi-automatic weapons because that would say you're going back to the revolver, era, which means everyone's got six wheels, seven wheels, or eight wheels. Now, if you ban Smith & Wesson eight-wheeled guns, or, yeah, as I call them, and seven wheels, you got six shooters and five shooters. That's it. And then what? You're going to ban high-capacity hunting revolvers because they shoot big bore bullets like this, and people are like, hmm. That's cool, seeing them explode. I've seen some YouTube vids on it, let me tell you. Are you going to ban the 7-shot 50 cal uh, Desert Eagle because it's too powerful? I mean, come on. The logical answer is simple. You can't just go and stack up and ban 900 plus guns just because they have 17 rounds, 15 rounds, or 13 rounds, or 10 rounds. you got to realize that doing that cuts out a lot of the market which cripples the market, pisses off the gun owners, and we don't know what's going to happen when that happens. Let's just hope that never happens. I've heard from people say, well, if this happens or that happens, there's civil war, and we got to avoid civil war. I don't know. I'm just going to sit here and watch it and see how well this plays out with legislation and see what the NRA will come up with, as well as gun owners of America, etc. Now, yes, I personally think uh, as other people do in town, put security guards in schools. Let security guards protect. If you can't do that, put in the National Guard to protect because they got an M16. And they're not afraid to use it when it comes to school uh, peons or people that want to raid a school. Colleges, whatever. Just put them in there and if someone get, you know, if some guy uh, is starting to decide to go off on a killing spree in a school, the guy with the M16 just goes, doo -doo 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 -doo. Done. Or the three shot burst M16s. Point taken. Everything is good. So, with that said, please add and subscribe if you like. Please post comments in the box if you like. And please look for my uh, uh, video soon on video games and why the game makers should not be banned for making first person shooters. Please add and subscribe if you like. Please post comments.